Turn with me to Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4, beginning at verse 13. So here we find these words sharing with us. For the promise that he would be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if those who are of the law are heirs, faith is made void and the promise made of no effect. Because the law brings about wrath, where there is no law, there is no transgression. Therefore, it is a faith that it might be according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham. Who is the father of all of us all? As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed. God who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. Amen. Who contrary to hope in hope believed so that he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken so shall your descendants be you read the rest of that when you get home I want to share with you this message having hope even when it's not cool to have hope That, that's the message. That's the message for this morning. Having hope, even when it's not cool to have hope. Every now and then, we have the personal obligation. To stand in the face of that which is not cool. Yes, sir. Yes. And do it anyhow. Mm -hmm. When the in crowd may reject us, we all do it anyhow. When friends start peeling off like layers of an onion. We all do it anyhow. There are some things in life that are not necessarily popular, but they are promising. Yes. You may not necessarily get a whole lot of kudos and attaboys, but you'll be better off on tomorrow. Somebody may have seen the movie. There's a, there's, a new, there's a movie out, a new movie. It's a remake. It's a throwback of an old movie that was once out before, I think, in the uh, 70s or so, called Flatliners. And Flatliners is a science fiction sci-fi type movie and normally I'm not really into the sci-fi and all of that but the wife put the movie on and yes. <laughs> yes. the movie say amen, amen. Uh, and it's, 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 it's a movie that's about five medical students who like to flirt with death They wanted to 
to experiment. They wanted to flirt with death without experiencing death. Amen. So, the course of this movie, a medical student by the name of Courtney is obsessed with the idea of the afterlife and wanting to find out what happens after death. She invites her fellow students Jamie and Sophia to join her in this experiment. And they find this unused hospital room somewhere beneath, below, and, and they go there and they take the fibrillators that traditionally and normally are used to bring somebody back. And they use them for an alternate purpose. They, Use them to flatline, yes. take away the heart rhythm yes. of the individual. They convince, she convinces them to do this to her. <laughs> I know it sounds, it sounds sci-fi. <laughs> and she allows them to take away her heart rhythm, and now. She is lying on that table with all of these gadgets and instruments and medical equipment. And they attach them to her brain to catch the rhythms and what's going on, what activity is taking place in her mind while she goes through this, this death, this out-of-body experience. And while she, while she is dead, she's flatlined with no heart rhythm, that's going on, they have trouble trying to bring her back. Right. <laughs> and they all but about give up and conclude that it's over. There's no hope. In reviving this girl, Courtney, and bringing her back to life. She had assured them earlier that she, they would not be held responsible for the experiment. And they go through with it, but they can't bring her back. With heads hung down, and with agony in their heart, and desperation and frustration, there's one individual who against hope continues to maintain a sense of hope. And that was this kid named Ray. After everyone else had given up, he continues to fight on when hope was no longer in her favor. And he continued to try to resuscitate, continue to try, you know, to defend all of these things until ultimately, with a sense of excitement, she recovers. And the heart begins to beat again. She's revived. Ray hoped when there was no hope. Ray sounds a lot like Father Abraham. His was sci-fi. Abraham was reality. It was Abraham. <coughs> this fourth chapter recalls to our mind that hoped against hope. When all was lost, he continued to hope in the plan that God had laid out in front of him for his life. And I want to leave you with this message today for your life. And I don't want you to miss this. I don't want you to think that you're here by surprise or by mistake or just cavalier. You know. I want you to catch this and take this home with you. Because sometimes in our lives God lays plain right before our very eyes a promise. 
God shares with us a plan, a purpose for our lives. But then along the way, there are various obstacles that say it's not cool. Y'all right. give up on that plan. Y'all will throw away your hope. When we look at Abraham, the first thing that we discover in Abraham's life is that it was not cool to have kids at his age. And the truth of the matter is, is that it was not just confined to Abraham's day, even to this day. Women try to finish having all their children by 40 or so. Yes. And for sure by 50. Can I get a witness? Uh, yes. yes. Uh, it, you know, it's just not cool to have kids after a certain point in life. Yes, yes. And yet God comes to Abraham and he shares with Abraham a promise that he would make Abraham a father of many nations. You know the story, don't you? Yes, yes. Yes, uh, the promise is, is that he would be a father of many nations, but in order for him to become father of many, he must start by being a father to just one. Yes. You have to, you have, to have at least one child may not have 16 like grandmama had. You, you, may, not, you may not have 20 uh, uh, like some of the old folk used to have during uh, some of our previous generation. You may not even have four, but you got to have at least, at least one. If you're going to be over many generations to come, and here it is that Abraham has a problem uh, that stands in the way of his promise. Promise is that he's going to be over many generations to come. He's going to be the father of the faithful. He is going to ultimately be connected to those who would stand up and say, I believe. Yes. Yes. For his time frame and thousands of years to come after his time, he would be the representative, the spokesman. He would be the example of, of that which is called faithful. But he was old. He was about 75 at the time that God makes him such promise. Around this time, the reproductive system is considered non-functional. Folk would look at Abraham and, and, and say that he's old. What is he doing? And what is he talking about? When Abraham and Sarah even were looked at and considered themselves, they had to admit they old. Yes. Uh, Sarah looked at her husband Abraham and uh, she said of her husband that he's dead. Now, he was not dead literally. He was not dead physically. Yes. But biologically and reproductively speaking, he was considered to be dead. Yes. Too late to have any children now. All right. Yes. As a matter of fact, when, when they thought about how old they was, hear me now, when they thought about how many years had passed in their life, Abraham had to snicker a bit <laughs> at the idea that he would have a child. Yes. Not only that, 
but on a separate occasion, uh, he, uh, uh, he, uh, Sarah rather, had to laugh herself. Yes. And Sarah laughed to the extent that God questioned her about her laugh, and she tried to hide and say, I, I didn't laugh. But they realized that it was just not cool yes. at their age yes. to have kids. Yes. And then time didn't make it cool. Mm. He already started out as an old man. Yes. But then some 25 years would go by and he had not yet seen any child being born. Yes. Yes. Somebody ought to say, that's not cool. <laughs> he, he's been trusting God and believing God by faith that he would provide a child. Yes. And year after year goes by. Yeah, there's no child. All right. Being born to self. Mm -hmm. No preliminary signs or results. Mm -hmm. No glimmer of hope on the horizon. And there is this temptation in life to stop hoping and start trying our own home remedies. Yeah, yeah. When things don't turn out the way that we anticipate, you know, the way that we have designed, planned, and orchestrated them in our mind. Yes. How we've laid out our, our business plan, how, how we have constructed uh, in, 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 in our theories uh, how it would work out. By about 25, I'd be here. Yes. And by the time that I reach 30, I should be here. And then when I'm 35, uh, I should be over here. Yes. Can I get a witness? Yes. Yes, we all make plans in our lives. Uh, and, and when things don't start adding up, yes. way that we feel life ought to add up, uh, we we sometimes turn to home remedies. Yes. We're all familiar with some home remedies, aren't we? Yes. All right. Yes. Yeah. Had to use some home remedies at my house. Yes. Can I get a witness? Yes. yes. Yeah, we, we're familiar with home remedies. Yes. Back some many years ago, one favorite home remedy was turpentine and sugar. <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah, some still use boiled water with salt in it. Some of y'all heard of hot toddy, I know. <laughs> and you can go on and on with all the various home remedies that we have constructed and come up with to, to help us to get over some of the hurdles of life. To, to heal some of life hurts and pain. And, and, so, and so sometimes, you know, we will try some of our home remedies. Yes. Yes. Uh, when things ain't healing up fast uh, as we think they ought to. Yes. In the meantime, our Abraham and Sarah still trying to cope with the reality that uh, things are not happening as fast mm -hmm. as they had hoped for. Yes. So Sarah comes with a home remedy. Yes. Mm -hmm. She brings Hagar yes. to Abraham. Uh, and, and she says to, to Abraham, uh, try, try this concoction. Right. Yes, maybe, maybe God didn't really mean the way he said he meant. Yes, yes. Yes, maybe, maybe, maybe God, uh, yes, had some type of an alternative remedy in mind. Uh, here, here, take, 
take Hagar and uh, you go and you have, have lie with her and come back with the child. Yes. And uh, Abraham had no problem with that set of instructions. Yeah. Can I get a witness? He had a child. He brought that child back and God slapped him on the hand and said, that's not what I meant. When I said that you would have a child, I said that you and Sarah would have a child. Go back to the drawing board and, and I want you to wait a little, a little while longer. Time was on his side. He, can you can you hear as the top the clock is ticking and and he's now approaching 100 and and, and, and there's no child in sight yes uh, and, and and so now that's why the scripture says uh, that, that that he who against hope believed in hope yes yes let, let me see if I can uh, practicalize it. Let me see if I can bring it down to your doorstep. Yeah. Yes. Uh, my brothers and sisters, that, that's when we come to the final moment of our lives when, when, when somebody tells us that, that, that we have no other options. Yes. 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 Come on, Pastor. yes uh, you, you either need to, uh, yes, pay the six months of mortgage that you're behind. Or get out. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes, uh, we're going to foreclose on your house. Yeah. On the thirty. Yeah. Yes, uh, my, my brothers and sisters, uh, that that that's 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 when we find ourselves uh, in in the hospital room, and the doctor comes in uh, and say, "You don't have but seventy-two hours." Uh, yes. Uh, uh,
let me tell you what God can do in your life. Yes. Abraham has the historical record that he is now the father of the faithful. Yes. yes. We now look back in history on Abraham, and we all use Abraham as, as a bookmark in history. We all use Abraham as a stepping stone for our faith. We look at Abraham as somebody that, that can be an example to us, a mentor. Uh, yes, uh, somebody who can give us hope because of what he has overcome in his life. But it wasn't always like that for him. Yeah. Yes, he, like you and I, yes, had to overcome some obstacles along the way in order for him to get what God has in store for him. He has the testimony today that I have made you a father of many nations. Yes. But, but, but this is what God did. Behind the scenes, this, this is what God was working out. Yes, uh, behind the scenes, God gives life to the dead. Yes, yes. Yes. Now, now, physiologically, biologically, and all of that, yes. the reproductive system uh, uh, of Abraham, they, they might well have been dead eternally in terms of their reproductive system, uh, but, but God gives life to the dead. Uh, God can step in your dead situation, whatever it may be, no matter how bad it may seem. I want you to know that God can walk into your dead situation and bring life. When there's no hope on the horizon, you ought to just trust God. Yes. Now, it says, God who gives life to the dead. Mm -hmm. But look at what else God is doing under the covers, behind the scene, behind the curtains of life, while Abraham is struggling for all of these years with with what is his purpose in life? What is God trying to accomplish in his life? While, while he's going through all of this emotional strain and stress in his life, God says that he is calling those things which do not exist. Yes. Thank you. He did not have a son. He did not have an offspring by Sarah. But God was calling those things that do not exist. Yes. What's missing in your life? Yes. What, what's missing? What don't exist today that God has promised already? What purpose God has in your life? You don't see the fruition of it. You don't see the end results. Uh, the end game is not here, but God has promised it to you. What has God placed in your life? Yes. Come on, Jesus. Preach. And I want to tell you, before you head to the locker room and throw in the towel, before you give up, before you stop trying, before you stop giving, before you stop with everything, I want you to know this. You ought to keep on holding on to God's unchanging hand. Yes, yes. I gotta sit down soon. Before I let you go, God can take that which don't exist and give it a future date. Yes. Some of us call it a post dated check. All right. I don't think they take those no more. With all the electronic stuff that's going on and all that, you know. They just can it. It's already going through your bank account. Yes. But they used to have post-dated check. You write a date on there for a date down the road. You knew the man at the market. You knew who had it. And you just tell them, don't cash this until Friday. Uh -huh. yes. And they'll stick it underneath the register and stick it in a special little place. And they'll hold on to it. 
post-dated check. My brothers and sisters, God has invested in your life and in my life a post-dated check. Yeah. You may not have the funds in your hand right now, but the date comes, yeah. the check becomes cash, yeah. and the money is in your account. Yeah. You just have to trust God. You just have to believe long enough. You have, just as that merchant would have to trust the individual who gave him the check, you've got to trust God and know that God is able to do that which he has promised. Yes. That he's able to bring it to pass. Yes. If God said it, that settles it. Yes. We can find hope through our faith. Yes. Verse 18 he says, who contrary to hope, in hope believed, so that he became the father of many nations. Yes. Sometimes you got to hope when it's contrary. You got to hope when it's not cool. Yes. You got to hope when it's tough. Yes. You got to hope when you can't do nothing but, but just grin and bear it. You got to hope against hope. Yes. And I know in this age in which we live, there are a whole lot of negative folk who are going around saying there's no hope because of the times in which we live, because of who holds office right now, because of this, because of that. There are a whole lot of folk who are saying that you don't have hope. You don't have no reason to have a dream. You don't have a reason to, to have a vision in your life. But I stop by and say, hold up. Who are you listening to for your future? When you finally get done following social media, when you finally get done listening to the politicians, the activists, the news media, and the like, I dare you to listen to him who is able to do all things. Yes. I dare you to stop and listen to him who made the world. Yes. And we who dwell in it. Yes, uh, last time I checked, the world is his and the fullness thereof. Yes, yes uh, last time I checked, he owns a cattle of a thousand hills. Yes. yes, last time I checked. Yes, God is able. Yes, yes he is to make a way out of no way. You go on and testify, baby. <laughs> yes, God is able to make a way out of no way. Yes, when all is lost and, and you're looking like you don't have no reason to hope on tomorrow, when it looks like you ought not get out of bed on Thursday, when it looks like you don't even need to go and lay down on Saturday, I dare you to trust God. Yes. Better be careful who you allow to speak into your life and into your circumstances. Yes. A lot of folks who are, who are speaking from their own personal perspective with their own individual motives and reason for why they say what they say. But I stopped by to tell you that you will not put your life on hold for, for some man, some individual. Uh, yes, uh, you will not put your life on hold. Uh, yes, uh, can, can I say it like this? You will not put your life on hold until a certain president get out of office. Yes, children still need to be fed, educated, and put in school. Yes, yes uh, there are still things that have to happen in our lives. Uh, yes, uh, we ought to continue to pursue our dreams. It don't matter who get credit for it. It don't matter whether or not this person or that person do good in the process. Amen. God can raise you up. You don't put your life on hold and say, I ain't going to let him get credit. You keep on hoping when it seems like there 
whatever God's got for you, it's for you. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ. Yes. Can I get a witness in here? Yes. I don't have time to finish this thing. I got to yes. cut it off. Yes, I, I, I got to cut it off. Yes, but there was a little boy, uh, and I'm going to sit down with this here. There was a little boy over in India, and he heard an American preacher, black preacher, by the name of Howard Thurman. He heard him preaching over in India. And one night after, after Howard Thurman had preached, Howard Thurman and his wife, Mrs. Thurman, had went to bed. They were in bed. They were resting and recuperating from the day that day. And there they heard at the door was a knock on the door. And, and it was this little boy knocking on that door. Very strange. Little boy, all by himself, not accompanied by his parents, but he all by himself went to them and found them, searched them out, and knocked on that door. Right. And they asked this little boy what he wanted. And uh, the little boy, standing outside, he says, I was on the outside of the building when you preached tonight. My Lord, my Lord. And I heard you talking about hope. Yes. And what I want to know is that is that same hope available to an untouchable. You have to understand in Indian Hindu culture and all that, in, in, in Hindu religion rather, right. uh, the, the untouchable were individuals who were the lowest caste. They, they were on the bottom class. Yes. Yes. Uh, they, they were the nobodies. They were, were the little folk. Uh, yes. Uh, the, the, the jobs that they did. Uh, yes. Uh, their fate life uh, was all tied out. That they, they were nobody. Their daddy wasn't nobody. Mama wasn't nobody. And they were just to be a nobody. Yes, yes. This little boy was in that class. He was already predetermined that he would be a nobody in life. Yes. And he heard this preacher, Howard Thurman, preach about hope. And he came knocking on this man's door. And he said, Is that hope available to an untouchable? And there are many of us today who are asking the same question as that little boy. Yes, it is there hope? Uh, yes, with a Trump presidency? Yes. Yes. yes, is there hope with an Obama presidency? Yes. Yes. Is there hope with a Bush presidency? Is there hope with a Clinton presidency? And I stop by to tell you, yes, there is. Yes. God sits high. And he looks low. Yes. yes, my brothers and sisters, you keep on hoping. Yes. Even when it's not cool to hope. Yes. Even when folk have already relegated you to a class that should not succeed, should never have dreams, uh, should never think that they'll ever amount to more than what their parents or other generations uh, amounted to. You keep on. Yes. Believe in God. Yes. Cast your faith in the Lord. Yes. God will take care of you. Yes. That's why many believers today are able to bear the testimony. Granddaddy was a slave. Yes. But now they are position. Yes. Many folk who are able to bear the testimony that grandmama, yes, uh, wiped somebody's baby's nose, but, but now I'm a school teacher. Yes. Somebody bear the testimony that, that what happened on yesterday is not repeated today. Now somebody is able to say, I'm, I'm an attorney. Somebody is able to say that now I an astronaut. Somebody is able to say that I have succeeded. I have excelled. Uh, yes, because my yesterday don't have to be my tomorrow. Yes. Come on, Pastor. Yes. 
Keep hope alive. Yes. Let's stand on our feet. Doors of the church are open. Amen, 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 God, amen, amen. We're at a great word this morning, and I guess this is the way we start the year off with faith and hope. And we got all our faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So now let's bless someone else according to how we've been blessed. In Jesus' name, amen.